What's up, everybody? It's Bryant. The thing we're going to do this time is take an array in Power Automate and turn it into a more usable format. Uh, in a previous video, we talked about processing data and turning that into an array that became eventually a CSV file that we could then output, attach to emails, etc. Sometimes you don't want a CSV file. You'd rather put that thing in a paragraph or send it out in an email as a sentence. So we want to take an array and turn it into a more usable format in that way. So let me show you how it's done. This is the flow we began with last time. And that's um, basically you trigger it, it pulls in rows in a table, it filters them, and it gives you um, an array out that's got just the columns we wanted. We then took it and created a CSV file. Instead of doing that, I'm going to show you two different ways that we can include this in a more usable format in, say, an email. First thing we're going to do is I want to show you an action in here. If you type HTML, um, there is a data operation here called create HTML table. And it actually takes into it an array and then formats the array as an HTML table as an output. So I've got my array from the select statement. That's exactly the way I want it to be. Yours could be an array uh, variable that you pull in here instead. But I'm just going to search for this output from the select statement. I've got some advanced options here. I could use the automatic columns. I could change the names of the columns by doing a custom mapping. But what I, you know, I, I'm my raise the way that I'd like it in my select statement. I already mapped these column names to be the way I wanted. So just going to create that HTML table. And then uh, next step will be to use the Outlook connector and to send an email. And I'll email myself. We can take a look at what this looks like. Okay, first thing I'm going to email, um, I'm going to put in here is the output of the select statement. So let me just search for output. That way you can see kind of what it looks like before we do anything nice to it, and then we'll put in there that HTML table. Okay, let's send, oh, I need a subject. Here's the data. All right, let's save and test this and take a look at um, what our output's going to be. This is a really simple way to go about doing this, just to create it as an HTML table and throw it in there. Now, when we look at the outputs of this HTML table, it's got it so nicely formatted here in the outputs. And if we look at the raw outputs, it's got this HTML code in here. However, when we look in our email, okay, the first bit here is what that JSON array looks like. The second bit is what that HTML table output looks like. Okay? And this, unfortunately, it doesn't do a good job always with the column, right? So we've got a column width now, column width problem where we're missing this gap. And so it's got the report numbers that are kind of bleeding over to the date. Not my favorite, but it is a pretty good way to do it. Now, this, since this is HTML code, we could use a border line here to help make this a lot easier to, to view and see. If you do a simple search online for HTML table border, looks like border. Okay, and we could figure out what the HTML code would be to add a border. And it turns out that all you have to do within the table tag is add a border equals one. So I'll show you really quickly how you might do that. Um, and then once you've seen how to do this, you can do any number of uh, transformations to that table code. So I'm going to throw in here a compose statement. And I'm going to call it add a border. For the inputs of this, we're actually going to come here under the string functions and find the replace. So what we really want to do is rip out the table tag and then put in a table tag that has a border in it. So what we want to replace, uh, the first thing it says is the text. Then we give it the old text and the new text. So the first thing is the text. We'll come grab this create HTML table output okay, and then a comma. Next thing is the old text. In here, it's a, a single quote, and it's just that table tag. And then I'll close with that single quote. And then the new text that we'd like um, is a table space border equals quote one quote, and then close that table tag. All right? I think that's how it had it formatted, table border equals one. Perfect. Just copy that in case this doesn't work. All right, there we go. We've replaced that in there. So now instead of sending um, that HTML table, I'm actually going to send the output of the add a border compose step. 
Perfect. Test, save and test. And we're off. Okay. We'll see that email come in. Now, you don't always want to do a table, right? We could format this table any number of ways. It could be really nice when we're all done. But at the end of the day, sometimes you really don't want a table. And you see here, it did come with the borders in. It's better. Uh, we obviously could do so, you know, there's some padding uh, elements you could add there in the HTML, etc. So go and explore that. Um, the wonderful world of HTML tables. We're going to now move our attention to a different way to do this. So forget the HTML table, forget adding a border. Okay, we're going to actually go through and apply to each. So last time I talked about how good it is to get rid of apply to eaches for your performance sake, um, but you may be using it anyways to create this filtered array for yourself. If that's the case, this might be the route to go. There's probably a better way to do this by using joins of some kind, but when you've got the column names specified, I'm not quite sure how to do that. Somebody else may have, have uh, better ideas, but I'm going to show you a way that has worked for me. So first things first, I'm going to add sized variable, and this will be our final text output. All right, so under name, I'm going to call it final output and it's just going to be a string in a, the initial value we blank okay the next thing i want to do is append to the string variable and here under final output for the value um, what i'll do is i want this to appear um, like this report colon space now you'll see I want to I want to show the report number next. You'll see my output from the select step is just an output. It doesn't give me column names. Uh, in that that video we did last time with the um, filtering and processing data, um, we talked about how you need to use a parse JSON step in order to see the column names here in your dynamic data. You can compose it kind of out yourself, um, but what I'll rather do instead of adding another parse JSON step here, I'm just going to go back to the first one. When you're creating a string variable, it may make sense to not use a select step. Select, remember, picks a certain number of columns and it kind of gets rid of the rest. It might be good if you want to create an HTML table or if you want to use that as like a CSV output. But when we're just creating a string variable, that added step of the select probably doesn't save us much time if we then have to add another parse JSON step after it. So I'm just going to skip that. I'm going to come back to the parse JSON step. And after report, just going to throw in here the report number. Where is that report number? Got the report date time, report number. Skipped it twice. And as soon as I do that, it throws me in the apply to each, which is exactly what I wanted to do. OK. This isn't going to work, but I'm going to show you anyways, because most of you will do it this way. You'll hit enter, um, put date, space, and throw in here the report date time. And then since we're going, this is being appended at the end of the string, we don't know how many of these there are. I'm going to throw an extra blank row. That way when they're after each other, there will be a row between each. Okay, I'm going to do that. And then in the email, I am going to include this variable, final output. Like I said, it's not going to work the way we expect, but I'll show you exactly what we can do to make it work the way we expect. First, I just want to show you what the output's going to be. Okay, it's going to run. Send me that email. Perfect. It went. And show me the money. Perfect. Here it is. Now you see, even though we threw the enters in there, uh, Power Automate has no idea what to do with them. So it just puts it as one long string. This is exactly not what we were looking for. A couple ways to do this. I've seen in the past folks adding in a, an enter in a separate variable and then concatenating it in here. Um, when you have more than two lines, I don't think that works. So this is a more sustainable method, especially if you're going to use this in, in an Outlook email. Let's just add in a break tag. Okay, so add in a break tag there, add in a break tag there, add in a break tag there. Okay, save and test. 
Yeah, break tags, you know, since we're using an Outlook email, it's going to interpret the HTML for what it is, uh, which is to add it and um, add an extra line there, a line break. So this should separate those out exactly how we want them to be. We could also use HTML tags to bold the header, right? So you can bold that first section by using a, a B tag um, to bold just that area. Now, I forgot that our apply to each here, um, I, I should have turned on concurrency control, right? That's on me. Um, it's probably taking a second or so per, per one of these, two seconds per run. About up to three seconds per apply to each. OK. Yep, three seconds per. OK, so now it sent me the email. Come and look at this email. Now we've got it formatted with those line breaks. OK, just for fun, I'm going to go bold it as well. Let's do that. Uh, first, I'm going to turn on concurrency here. Since all we're doing, um, since all we're doing is appending, we can absolutely run these in concurrent current runs. OK, so I'm going to add in a bold tag here. And then slash out of it. We'll do the same here with date. OK. Let's run it. And like I said, I've seen other people who've been successful using like a join statement to turn these things into a, a list. Um, I, you know, it depends on what what your array looks like. If your array is literally a list of values, so it's like quotes, value, and then a comma and the next value. In our case, our array has a column header to it, and joining it doesn't necessarily give me the outputs I was looking for. Again, I'm I'm no HTML expert here, um, but but it wasn't exactly what I was hoping. This thing is uh, suddenly not running the best. Okay, there we go. Not caught up there. All right, so it was uh, 33 seconds to run the supply to each. Now it's four seconds because I turned on that concurrency control. Um, here's what we had previously, and when this new data comes in. Bolded. So it looks a lot better. So that's how I'd do it if I was trying to convert an array into a more usable format. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, this solved an issue that you've been having. Um, hit find me on Twitter at the Flowhawk and uh, let me know what other things you're stuck with. We'll help you figure it out.